This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 1462, High Temperature Searches, by Colin Wright of exilelifestyle.com. And I'm Justin Mollick, the guy who's been reading articles, book excerpts, essays, sometimes stories every day, including holidays, for four years. Today, actually, exactly four years ago was episode one of this show. I can't believe it. Thank you for continuing to listen. I've been able to keep going. Thanks all to you. If you wanna listen to more and give back in that way, we just launched a new show called Optimal Living Advice, hosted by life coach and actor Greg Audino. He answers your life questions. I think it's a great idea. So please check it out. Subscribing to that podcast is a huge gift to us and he put in so much work and research to answer your questions. So it'd be nice to show him some support too. You can listen and subscribe to Optimal Living Advice pretty much wherever you're listening to this show. And with that, let's get right to it and start optimizing your life. High Temperature Searches by Colin Wright of exilelifestyle.com. I came across an interesting concept that touches on both neuroscience and artificial intelligence recently. My first contact with this concept was in a book about psychoactive substances, but the notion branches out to encompass a wide variety of fields, depending on how you think about it. The idea is that some thinking requires more brain power than other types of thinking. In particular, thinking our way through novel problems or trying to come up with original solutions to existing problems. This taxes our brains more than coming up with road or customary solutions that we can either recall or reference rather than having to develop new ones out of nothing from whole cloth. What this means in practice is that because our biologies do their best not to overtax us and aspire to save energy wherever possible, we tend to revert to norms, to the predictable, whenever possible and we go the extra mile to try to cram unfamiliar problems, unfamiliar variables, into familiar boxes. This allows us to use less processing power and to benefit from the knowledge we've accumulated over the course of our lives, both experiential knowledge and learned database knowledge. Children, though, don't have that brain-based library of experience and facts to pull from, so their brains tend to approach each new problem as, well, a new problem. Rather than contextualizing it as something familiar to make problem solving more efficient, they start from scratch, extrapolate in wild directions, and approach it without any preconceived notions, no sense of what's more probably correct and what's more probably not correct. That means from the baby's perspective, any path is a possible, legitimate path to take. From the adult's perspective, on the other hand, it's supposed that some ideas will be more likely to work, while others are far less likely and therefore not even worth trying. Children then seem to be neurologically primed to explore, while adults may be more neurologically primed to exploit, to benefit in terms of energy and time saved from previously acquired experience and knowledge. In some facets of the world of artificial intelligence, these dichotomous methods of exploration are referred to as high temperature and low temperature searches. High temperature searches require more energy, more processing power, and therefore cause the hardware hosting the AI to run at higher operating temperatures. Low temperature searches make use of existing knowledge and experience to come to conclusions more efficiently, cutting out the wild extrapolations and harebrained schemes that will almost certainly not work to focus on the small collection of more likely solutions. There are pros and cons to both of these approaches, of course, but it's thought, and this takes us back to the world of neuroscience, that the older we get, the more we tend to rely on low temperature thinking and imagining. With age and experience, our thought processes fall into grooves in the intellectual road that our prior trips have slowly weathered into the pathway of possibilities. This means that we're more likely to come up with probably right answers more of the time and faster the older we get. But it also means on average that we're less likely to make connections between seemingly unconnected things because we don't even try to do so. We're less likely to come up with asymmetric approaches to solving problems, and we're less likely to defy the way things are and the way things work, as those norms are defined by our lifetime of experiences. There's almost certainly a social component to this alongside this potential neurological component. Who, after all, wants to be seen trying to drive a nail with a fish instead of a hammer? An adult human tends to know that the hammer will work better, but a baby doesn't. And as a consequence, that baby may try a bunch of silly-seeming things, some view of which may end up being brilliant, while the majority of them only result in a very unhappy fish hammer. This was brought up in a book about psychedelics because it's thought by some 
that these sorts of substances can help put us adults back in a high temperature thinking space where the spectrum of what's possible and likely is more expansive, just like when we were kids. That sense of play, that sense of potential increases, unhindered by the grooves our mind tires have eroded over the years, giving us the ability to think more freely, more inefficiently for a time. This is primarily speculation at this point, but it's an interesting thought. And although I don't have any strong feelings against psychoactives, it's worth considering how we might achieve the same, part of the time at least, without needing any such substances to get us there, without relying on the external to expand our internal capabilities. Might it be possible to liberate ourselves from groove thinking by simply achieving the proper mindset? Might it be possible to expand our sense of possibility by meditating or breathing the right way? or by having varied enough experiences that we sometimes bypass our sense of shame and concern over being seen as foolish, so that we might justify being more adventurous and childish. It's an idea that's worthy of consideration and a variable that may be worth working into our personal conceptions of self and possibility. It's relatively common to aspire to be more capable, I think, but less common to aspire to be less efficient and more meandering in how we problem solve. Periodic intellectual deviations, though, could prove to be valuable and enjoyable additions to our habitual thought patterns. You just listened to the post titled High Temperature Searches by Colin Wright of exilelifestyle.com. Thank you to Colin. He's always challenging me, probably one of the hardest authors for me to narrate, but also challenging my thoughts too. Really interesting research about us not thinking outside the box as we get older. I guess that's how I would sum it up. So how do we continue to think like kids with a beginner mind as we get older, at least without using mind-altering drugs? I think there's a book called Beginner's Mind, maybe Zen Mind, Beginner's Mind, something like that, that covers the topic pretty well. I read it a long time ago. Might have to check that one out again. But that should do it for today. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you again for being here on the four-year anniversary of this show. Do check out Optimal Living Advice and subscribe to that if you wanna support us some more. And I'll see you tomorrow for the Friday episode where your optimal life awaits.